here's an overview of the play Bold Girls by Rona Munro. This video will look at the where, the when, the what, and the who of Bold Girls. Where. The action in Bold Girls is set in a poor working class area of Belfast, the capital city of Northern Ireland. When. The story takes place over the course of a single day and night during the Troubles, late 1980s, early 1990s, in Northern Ireland, when a bitter conflict was raging between the Republicans, mainly Catholics, who wanted Northern Ireland to join the Republic of Ireland, and the Unionists, mainly Protestants, who wanted to stay part of the United Kingdom. What? In its four scenes, this one-act play Bold Girls explores several important themes, all of which revolve around conflict of one sort or another. For example, truth versus self-delusion, dreams versus reality, women versus men, women versus women, and externally, unionists versus republicans. Three of the characters in the play are trying not to face the truth and are in some way deluding themselves, whereas the fourth person, the fourth character, is hell-bent on getting to the truth. The friendships between three of the women, as well as the relationships between all four women and the men in their lives, are explored. It's interesting that not one of the male characters speaks or appears on stage. Instead, we learn about the men exclusively through the dialogue of the women. Conflict is present in many aspects of the story, from the embattled streets of Belfast outside the flat, to domestic violence suffered by Nora and Deirdre, to the eruption of conflict between the normally gentle Marie and her supposed best friend Cassie in scene four, when Cassie reveals that she and Michael had betrayed Marie for years. Who? When Bold Girls was performed at the Citizens Theatre in Glasgow in 2018, the Guardian's critic described the four characters in the following terms. Three working-class Belfast women plus a mysterious hanger-on. The four women in question are bold in the Irish sense of the word, i.e. not only are they gutsy and brave, they also have spirit and attitude, often playful in a cheeky way despite their hardships. First, there's Marie, a widow and single mother who is courageous. Despite being left to bring up two children on her own in poverty, she puts a brave face on things and is described in the stage directions as cheerful. She's hard-working and a homemaker. Remember the gleaming hearth mentioned in the stage directions describing her flat at the opening of the play? Marie is a good mother. Remember the reference to the toys in the opening stage directions. And we get the impression that she prioritises her children over herself. She's struggling financially, but tries to claim that she's coping, despite Cassie's reference to three red bills on the mantelpiece. Marie is kind and compassionate. She feeds the birds, which symbolise her dreams of life beyond Belfast. She cares about other people and is a very good friend to Cassie. Oh, the irony. Which brings us to the final point about Marie. She is delusional, determined to believe that her late husband Michael was faithful to her, which of course we discover by the end of the play he absolutely wasn't. Cue Marie's best friend, Cassie the traitor. As for Cassie, well she is pretty much the opposite of Marie. As is clear in scene two, when the bold girls are at the club and Cassie wants to be the centre of attention, while Marie doesn't want to be noticed at all. Cassie is gobby, to quote BBC Bite Size's excellent online revision notes. In other words, she regularly says what she thinks without holding back. She can also be funny, even cynical at times, and her humour contrasts with the serious reality of life for these four women. For example, when referring to the tense relationship with her mother, Cassie says, I fell out with my mummy on the delivery room floor. Cassie is unsympathetic to her mother's situation, i.e. the fact that her violent father used to beat her mother. And importantly for the climax of the play, Cassie is an adulteress, having slept with Marie's husband Michael before he was killed during the conflict. Like Marie, Cassie is also delusional, convincing herself that she can run away from the mess of her life with the £200 she's stolen from her mother. But of course it's not enough. And if Cassie were a realist, she'd know that. One of the main things Cassie is desperate to escape from 
is her husband Joe, who will soon be coming out of prison. And when you hear how she describes him in scene two, who could blame her? Lastly, as mentioned already, Cassie has a rather tense relationship with the third of the bold girls, her mother, Nora. Nora is older than the others and thus has more life experience. Perhaps this is why she realises that big, unrealistic dreams are not likely to come true, and instead she focuses on smaller, domestic dreams that are slightly more realistic, such as making her sitting room look nice. With 15 yards of pale peach polyester mix, who could forget? Consequently, when Deirdre chops the fabric up, although initially disappointed, Nora resolves simply to go and buy more fabric. Nora is tough and resilient, we learn that she challenged the British soldiers about not having a warrant to search her house, and they pushed her through a hedge. She's also old-fashioned in her attitudes. We see this from her unsupportive comments about the female character in the film that the Bull Girls are watching. Nora herself has been the victim of domestic violence at the hands of her violent husband, Sean. She dotes on her son, Martin, despite him fathering an illegitimate child and being in prison. But she hasn't treated her daughter Cassie very fairly, as is clear from Cassie's monologue about her miserable childhood and being told off by Nora for nothing while Martin got off scot-free no matter what he did. Nora thinks Cassie should be happy because Joe doesn't beat her and that she should just get on with it. Last but not least, there is the fourth girl, Deirdre, who is also bold in her own way. She is ghostly and mysterious, and she looks like Michael. She's mistreated by her mother's boyfriend, as it evidenced by the bruises on her arm. She's dishonest. She steals clothes and earrings from Marie and money from Cassie. And most importantly, Deirdre is exceptionally determined. Determined to find out the truth about her dead father, even if it means threatening Marie with a knife to get that truth. She yearns to belong somewhere, as is revealed when she says in the exposition of the play, I want to get inside. Deirdre's main role in Bold Girls is that of a catalyst. If you've not come across this word before, the definition of a catalyst is a person or thing that precipitates an event. In her quest to discover the truth about what Michael was like, Deirdre, ultimately armed with the symbolic knife, affects the lives of each of the other three bold girls, revealing truths or realities that are unpalatable. In other words, that they might have preferred not to face. Here's what Deirdre does. Firstly, Deirdre's actions affect Marie dramatically. Marie is deluded about her late husband, Michael, refusing to acknowledge reality even when she notices that Deirdre looks like Michael. Deirdre mentions seeing Cassie and a man in the blue car, and this prompts Cassie to confess to Marie. This in turn means that Marie has to confront the truth that her husband was not perfect. However, despite all the drama, Marie appears to accept Deirdre by the end of the play. She has also had an epiphany along the way about the relationship between men and women, realising that they need to understand each other's situation better. Marie grows as a character throughout the play, which Cassie and Nora do not. Secondly, Deirdre's actions affect Cassie. As mentioned above, Deirdre's arrival puts Cassie under pressure to tell Marie the truth, thereby damaging a good friendship. As if that's not enough, Deirdre also steals the secret stash of money that Cassie had hoped would allow her to fulfil her dream of escaping from her life in Belfast. Deirdre's appearance thus destroys Cassie's dream of escaping by revealing it to be impracticable. Thirdly, Deirdre's actions affect Nora. Nora is older than the other three characters in the play. Her hard life has made her tough, and when it comes to dreams, she's not setting the bar too high. Fifteen yards of pale peach polyester mix appears to be a modest and realistic dream. Yet Deirdre seems determined to stamp on others' dreams if she can't have her own, which is possibly what prompts her to slash Nora's fabric with her knife. In the other Bold Girls videos, we look at 15 key quotations and previous eight mark questions. See you next time. If you found this or any of our other videos useful, it would be great if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks for your support.